Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 1 Retrospective Review, where I rewatch some of the older episodes of Miraculous that I never made reviews for, and give some thoughts. We're still struggling through the slog that can be Season 1, but the last couple of episodes we've reviewed have actually been really decent, so hopefully this one, Puppeteer, keeps up that hot streak. Okay, so we start off the episode with, well, it's actually a massively wholesome opening scene where Marinette plays with Manon. They have all the dolls of Ladybug, Cat Noir, a couple of the villains, and they're playing, they're having fun, Marinette's teaching her about the lore of superheroes, based. And do you reckon that Marinette made those dolls herself? Or is some toy company just going, screw it, I see a niche, and a demand for merchandise, and I'm gonna fill it and make some money. Actually, no, never mind, just as I wrote this, I noticed how cheaply made these dolls look, so either she bought it from one of those budget street stalls, or she made it herself. But like, even if she made it herself, usually she has much better craftsman skills than this. And isn't it a little weird to make a dolly of yourself? No, just me? Okay. Anyway, it comes out that Marinette, when they play heroes and villains, never lets Manon play with the heroes. And on top of that, always has the heroes win over the villains because those are the rules. And I gotta say, come on Marinette, this poor kid is what, like four? And you're 14. You're not sharing, and you're forcing her to be the loser every time you play. That ain't it. And so Manon understandably gets quite upset, only to be placated by Marinette offering to let her borrow the Ladybug doll for her to play with at home and bring back next time. So you turn it around, and it becomes wholesome once more. And man, I never really thought about it before, because I've always kind of found Manon and most of the little kids in this show to be deeply, deeply annoying and grating. But this scene is very cute. Manon's mum then turns up at this stage to pick her up, and lol. <laughs> Menon runs instantly over to complain about Marinette always winning in their games, and this part felt very accurate. If there's one demographic that's just so willing to throw anybody under the bus for any reason to get them in trouble, it is children of this age. Her mum then gives her a life lesson in being a good loser, and then doesn't let her take the toy, which causes a bit of a meltdown and a tantrum, and leads to poor old toy ladybug losing an arm in the scuffle. But it doesn't really matter, as whilst her mum's on the phone with Alec, Manon goes back upstairs to get her bag and manages to swindle Marinette out of her lady Wi-Fi doll, managing to convince Marinette with her baby doll eyes. And honestly, it is a bold strategy to go against what her mum specifically said, especially since Marinette is not going to be facing any of the consequences. It's a little kid that's going to cop it. Oh, Marinette. Sometimes you have to protect kids from their own stupidity. Marinette needs to listen to Tiki more, because while she ain't human, she is an immortal creature that has some sort of idea about how children behave, and yet all just backfires. Because at the TV studio, Nadia notices that Manon has one of the dolls, she yells at her, she takes it away, you know, and I gotta say, it's by this point, the cute factor I mentioned before, it's gone. It's well and truly worn out its welcome, now she is annoying again. Ugh, oh, shut up, kid! And of course, in her rage, she attracts the attention of Hawk Moth, who is super eager to send an Akuma her way and turn her into Puppeteer. Man, this dude has no shame, does he? Targeting a little girl to possess her and turn her into a supervillain. Oh my god. I mean, and I just got reminded of the one time or multiple times he akumatizes an actual legitimate baby. Like a little toddler. Gigantitan. This dude really is just a massive piece of shit. This man is actual pond scum. He is a gold standard oxygen thief of the highest order. But yeah. I cannot believe he ends season 5 with a big statue celebrating him as a hero. Oh my goodness. But yeah, he turns Little Manon into Puppeteer. But not before we get a cutaway to the train station, where Alia and Marinette are getting ready to attend a movie together. When who should be there but Adrian Agrest? And yeah, of course, this gets Marinette all hot and bothered, all flustered. Because of course it does. She is a stalker after all. And she even admits it with the help of a funny little cartoon. At least she's honest about it. And I gotta say, I really enjoy it when they blend multiple animation styles together in the show. It rarely happens, but when it does, it feels fresh, it feels fun, visually unique. Oh, I wish they'd include more of it. Although with that being said, if they did more of it, maybe it would feel less special. But yeah, all of this culminates with the most awkward sequence of events ever where Adrian, in the next carriage over, notices them looking at him. He visibly sees Marinette duck behind Alia. The camera angles make this clear, and then they all just awkwardly wave, with Alia eventually pulling Marinette out from behind her. Ooh, no thank you, couldn't be me. And whilst this is all ongoing, Puppeteer's gone to get back the Lady Wi-Fi doll, so she can start the first phase of her plan to get the Miraculouses, and also get her hands on the Ladybug doll that she desperately wants, so she can always win. 
I tell you what, good thing there was no Hawk Moth around when I was a kid. Otherwise, there would have been a daily akumatization for me when my brother wouldn't let me play RuneScape on the family computer. Next time you fucking put a hand on me, I'm gonna fucking rip your face off, bitch. What did he do to him? Can you fucking push me next time? Anyway, Ali is then transformed into Lady Wi-Fi again by Puppeteer, but this time, she speaks with Puppeteer's voice and intonation. Uses her mannerisms and whatnot. And yeah, this was genuinely funny. Like, seeing Alia behave like this little kid angry about wanting her dollies, that was fun. Man, some of these episodes, they do feel really fresh even on this rewatch. It's crazy to me how they became so formulaic over time. And they really did stop doing a lot of the exciting stuff they'd done previously. Like, yeah, sometimes it would come back. But over the course of the seasons, they just sort of lost that. They became more generic. Because when season one is good, it's really good. And I mean, yeah, sometimes it sucks. But that's the growing pains of any show. And here, it's going very well. Anyway, Lady Wi-Fi rushes off to Marinette's house to find the doll, whilst Adrian sneaks off to transform into Cat Noir. He then speaks to Marinette about what's going on, and he learns where Lady Wi-Fi is going, and off he goes. With Marinette transforming into Ladybug and following in his wake. And they arrive just in time to catch Lady Wi-Fi red-handed. They have some fun banter about who's a goody two-shoes and who is not, before Cat Noir runs off to take the Wi-Fi signal out, whilst Ladybug snatches back her doll to prevent her being controlled. And refreshingly, she actually loses here because of this. She gets frozen. Lady Wi-Fi is moments away from taking her earrings. It's almost a game over, if not for Cat Noir intervening just in the nick of time to knock out the Wi-Fi signal, which in turn allows Ladybug to wake back up and whoop some ass. But of course there's no Akuma in the phone, which quickly makes her realise that Puppeteer is going to be who they have to beat. And I gotta say, just to dial it back for a second, I found it so refreshing to have Cat Noir be the one that saves Ladybug. Like, these moments, they truly do get fewer and fewer as the seasons progress. But this episode... It really showcases why the show got so popular to begin with. It's a banger. It's just a whole lot of fun. And I hope they keep bringing that back as we go along into Season 6. We then learn that Lady Wi-Fi has escaped with Cat Noir's doll, which almost certainly means he's going to get mind controlled at some point. But hey, you win some, you lose some. And so here we start to build to the climax of the episode. Lady Wi-Fi delivers the stolen dolls to Puppeteer. Ladybug starts heading over there as fast as she can. And Cat Noir detransforms to feed Plague some cheese. Although considering we see Plague drop the cheese when Adrian hastily transforms again, seems like poor old Plague didn't even get to enjoy it. Or recharge or anything. This is irresponsible Kwame care, son, and I won't stand for that. Anyway, they all converge on the TV studio for a big battle. Cat Noir gets mind controlled, of course. So we have Ladybug versus Cat Noir versus Lady Wi-Fi and Roger Cop and Evil Illustrator. You know, I don't really like those odds. But of course it's Ladybug and she has tremendous plot armor. I mean... Tremendous heroic ability. So we all know she'll get the job done in about three minutes. So yeah, she pretty much outsmarts all the villains at once. She gets a hefty helping of plot armor, like when she manages to take out Roger Cop with duct tape. Like, he's a robotic cop. How is duct tape taking him out, even for a moment? And also, when Puppeteer actually is holding her puppet, she doesn't even bother using her power to try to take control. She just lingers and waits. She could do it whilst the goons are fighting, but she doesn't. And so, this gives Ladybug the opportunity to go full Jedi on the villains and utterly obliterates them. Like, look at this. She's just destroying them. And then she even stops Manon from taking control right in the nick of time. To think, if Manon had used her power any earlier, even just a second, Marinette would have lost. <sighs> oh well. You know, you, you just gotta accept it. <laughs> you know, you gotta accept it. Then we de-evilize, reverse all the damage, yada yada yada. Gabe has his big meltdown because... Of course, and honestly, it is a well-deserved meltdown this time, because this was an unlucky defeat for him. And then we finish off with some more cute men on stuff, with Marinette taking her to the zoo. And you know, this episode is just peak miraculous, really. Got all the good stuff, yeah, some ladybug plot armor, but it was a cool fight sequence if we're being honest, like really cool. One of the best ones of the season. And Cat Noir on top of that does not end up looking like a dweeb to make her look cooler. Yeah, he doesn't really factor into the ending, but it made sense and he got moments earlier. So yeah, great episode. Hopefully the rest of season one continues on this track. And so with all that being said, these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode if you watched it back recently? Do you like it? Hate it? you agree with my thoughts? I'm curious if you thought so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.